Hello, this is Dr. Stephen Bracci. Welcome back to the Ageless Rage podcast where we rage about how we're aging in this country. Today's topic is a very important one to women, has to do with menopause, hormone therapies, and what options they have to avoid all the symptoms of menopause. Today I have my esteemed guest, Dr. Uh, Elizabeth Ramirez. She's an OBGYN surgeon and she's a chairperson of her um, hospital in New Jersey, Christ Hospital. Uh, so I want to welcome you, Dr. Ramirez. Um, tell me uh, a little bit about your practice and your experience. Well, thank you very much for having me here today, first of all. Um, so I have currently um, two practices. Uh, the name of the practice is called Jersey Women's Care Center. One is in Hudson County and the other one is in Bergen County. I've been practicing for about 17 years and have a very special um, interest in menopause. And the reason why we got, we, I invited Dr. Ramirez because I know this is not only her passion, but this is something she does every day. And I felt that was a very good way to have a segue into this conversation, talk to somebody who's really on the front lines discussing this with patients every day. So welcome again. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, um, uh, about what menopause is? Tell us a little bit about what the medical diagnosis is. So menopause is basically um, amenorrhea for approximately 12 months. And amenorrhea means not seeing a menstrual cycle. So it is a retrospective diagnosis. So it's after the fact and it's after the women have their last period for one year. That afterwards. is correct. Then they're definitely in menopause. Um, what do women really share with you? What is the big thing that drives them to discuss this or how do they, how does this topic come up in your, in your office? So there's a certain women who are highly expressive and there are certain women that if I don't ask the question, they will not tell me that they're going through the changes of life. And the women that do come in uh, for consultations, the most common symptom is hot flashes. That's, that's, what, that's the, how the topic start, starts. That is correct. Um, and so tell us a little bit about, about hormones in general. How does that affect women from their first period through, through pregnancy to, the, to menopause? Tell us about the whole cycle in, in a nutshell. So basically, we'll start from puberty. Uh, in which there is an uprise of estrogen, and that leads to changes of the secondary um, sex characteristics. Then you have adolescence in which a woman starts having her menstrual cycle. Then there is pregnancy. Again, there is an uprising of estrogen in which it prepares a woman for breastfeeding and also for labor. Then after they deliver a gorgeous baby, there is withdrawal of estrogen, and they start having certain symptoms, which means that they feel that they're shedding hair, their hair is thin, they have vaginal atrophy. Then there is what is known as the perimenopausal um, state, or the menopausal transition state, which is you know, around the 40s. And menopause, again, like I said, it's a retrospective diagnosis, and the average age is 51. So getting back to this period where women experience this after they've delivered, they have this withdrawal of estrogen and that's like a precursor to what they're gonna experience when they actually get into menopause, correct? Yes, they start complaining that the vagina feels extremely dry, they're, they're basically, they're having hair loss, they feel fatigue, in addition to the hormonal changes, but they also have a newborn baby that they need to uh, you know, adjust. And, and depression is another uh, big thing. And depression is a, a big thing as well. So in my practice, I'm clinically based on aesthetics, and the big thing that I see women complain about is they complain about their skin. They have dryness, they see more sagging, and they feel like it's not necessarily even, it's almost as if they they have this steady state of changes that go on and all of a sudden there's like a cliff that happens and they see these big changes that they that appears what in their mind with relatively soon, like within a year or two of their last period. They really see big changes and the, obviously the hair is a big thing, the skin is a big concern. Um, and the other big thing is that they, they complain about uh, fat redistribution, they have fat changes. 
where they lose the fat in sexually, in, in hormonally dependent areas such as the breast and the hips, and they gain this abdominal fat. So it's not so much um, a fat gain, but a fat redistribution. They're kind of reversing some of the things that went on with puberty, and they kind of go back to losing some of that and gaining it in other places. So that's a big thing. Tell us about um, the big things that women complain about physically with, when it comes to the vagina, uh, their labia, their clitoris. Tell us about the, the woman's, woman's experience with that specific area. So I'll just give you um, a clinical scenario. You have patients that come in in their mid-40s or in their early 50s or even in their late 50s. Um, and one of the most common complaints is a vaginal burning. They complain about vaginal burning. And sometimes they're mistreated. They're told that, oh, you have a yeast infection. And yet they, what they truly have is a deficiency of estrogen. Because just like you mentioned, as far as the thinning of the skin, the vagina gets thin because you lose that collagen, right? And the vaginal epithelium, which is the lining of the skin, skin gets thinner. So they also have reoccurring urinary tract infections, uh, urethritis. They also have pain with intercourse, which is known as dyspareunia. As well, they, some of them can experience which is known as postmenopausal uh, bleeding. But we have to be very careful that we can't say postmenopausal bleeding is just because of estrogen to withdrawal. It could be due to other underlying um, causes that needs further investigation. Another thing that can happen is basically what's known as postcoital bleeding. And that could be attributed to infection or that can be due to menopause. So those are uh, common um, things that I deal in the office with. And so they're, they're bleeding and they have pain after sex. Yeah. That's Another very common that I mentioned, 75% of women in the United States are affected by hot flashes. And um, in hot flashes, basically, it definitely affects a woman's mood. And it changes her, it, you know, you get a little bit anxious. They're like, oh my God, my, my wife is, you know, suffering from anxiety, she's feeling depressed. So if a woman does not get a good night's sleep, how can she function? How can she function? So, and at this day and age, why do we have to suffer? There's multiple therapies out there versus hormonal versus non-hormonal. So tell us, tell us about hormone therapies. What are the options that women have um, and what in terms of pills versus uh, uh, patches versus implants? So in, in my particular, before I start discussing as far as therapy, I do a thorough history and physical. I make sure her mammogram is up to date. I do a pelvic exam, uh, in ex a pel pardon, a pelvic examination. I'll do an ultrasound to get a baseline um, information as far as to know what her endometrial stripe before I considered hormone uh, replacement. Then I ask, what are your symptoms? What is actually affecting you more in life? If it's hot flashes, we have now hormonal therapy and non-hormonal therapy. And if she is, if she desires hormonal therapy, my other question is, it really, it needs to be tailored to that individual. Does she have a uterus? Does she not have a uterus? So there's a lot of medical things that go into tailor, tailor making your, your prescription or your advice and what exactly. the best options. Tell us, I hear a lot about this plant-based options for women um, for therapies. Tell us about that. So in a woman that's in menopause, the most important thing, I, it, it's a series of things. I de definitely recommend a very good, healthy diet, number one. Um, exercise is very important. Taking your, your vitamin A, your vitamin D, C, uh, these are natural things that you can do. Your biotin is very important. Um, aside from that, if it's basically vaginal uh, dryness, you can uh, use what's no moisturizer. One of the most important thing in or order like to prevent wrinkles is hydrate, hydrate. Hydrate within with water and hydrate with creams. And now we have hyaluronic acid that we can use in our vagina in order to maintain that lubrication, that moisturizer. So um, it really depends on their symptoms and it also depends on as far as their clinical background. So I think this is an exciting time. I think people have options now. Like one of the biggest things that I see in my practice is when I walk into a room, 
I can tell, like if I see a 60 year old patient, I have a sense right away that they're on hormone therapies, I know, because they can be doing all the cosmetic things and have lifestyle and diet, but there's something very different about them. And, I, and I, the, the, the experience that I have is when I ask them about it, they usually open up and they tell you how good they feel, how more confident that they feel, how they feel compared to their, to their peers at their same age. So there's this whole thing that a lot of women are really not sharing with other people because it's like a taboo subject. But when you see the women and you see how they, how good they feel and how good that they look and how energetic they report that they are, you say, well, why don't more people know about this? Why is it such a hidden taboo subject? So we basically need to eliminate this taboo. We're in a whole different generation. So we need to express ourselves. And why should we suffer from hot flashes? Just like when I have a patient that's in labor, why do you want to push without an epidural? Why do you want to have pain? So I think we need to, that's why we're here, bring, bringing it out there, let women be informed. There's different therapies, there's hormonal therapies, there's non-hormonal therapies. And of course, if you are sleeping every night, you're going to be with more energy, you're going to feel more alive. But if you're having like four or five hot flashes during the night and you're not able to get a good night's sleep, of course you're gonna have mood changes, of course you're gonna feel depressed. It's like, of course you're gonna have brain fog that people discuss about that during menopause. And another thing, exercise is very important. Weight training is very important. Uh, healthy diet. So there's a lot of things that come into play. Well, I, I had, I've had women tell me that they basically were doing everything. They were athletes, they had good nutrition, they went through menopause, and they experienced muscle loss that they couldn't seem to regain. And then when they started the hormone therapies, they felt like they gained that muscle back. They felt like they got that performance back. And a lot of women don't even understand or equate that as an option. They just think it's just aging. It's not, you just feel fatigue and tired. So you really have to, but again, regarding the hormones, everyone is an individual, so you need to evaluate your, you know, every person. So the biggest question that women, once I bring this subject up to them, they wanna, they say, well, where do I go? Where do I find a doctor for this? What, because a lot of times their OBGYN doesn't, doesn't give them this option that you give. You need to do your research and also go to your OBGYN, have a nice, you know, conversation. You need to feel comfortable with your doctor. So you, you need to be able to express. So you think it's an individual thing if they're not getting it from one OBGYN and they have to find another Absolutely. one? Absolutely. That's the Absolutely. big thing, is, is finding the doctor who can answer Who's these right questions. Who's right for you. Um, so l lastly, I just wanna, what are the, some of the big areas for hormone therapies where women really wouldn't be good candidates? Um, I mean, the woman that we don't recommend hormone uh, replacement therapy, we basically recommend it to start in a younger age, not to start at 60, 65. So I recommend it uh, ideally in that perimenopausal um, state. And contraindications, of course, are if they have coronary artery disease, number one, if they have any estrogen secreting tumor like breast cancer, endometrial cancer is not a good candidate any history um, as far as they have, um, you know, a DVT, a venous thrombosis is also contraindicated. Um, severe hyperlipidemia, the triglycerols are like above 500. You're not gonna start a patient on estrogen that they can get like a stroke, you know, a blood clot or so forth. So again, you have to tailor the treatment. You have to do baseline labs when you see a patient. You have to do their lipid profiles. You have to check their TSH. You have to do a thorough, um, history and physical mammogram as well as a pelvic ultrasound. So there's a lot of medical details that go into this. It's not exactly. a it's not a quick decision, and it really comes down to severe, I mean, serious medical um, discussions, and then and then the intimacy of your physician. Absolutely. Having that, um, when women go through menopause and then they experience the improvements from hormone therapies. We talked about what it is they go through to lead to. Once they get these therapies, what do they tell you? What's the feedback that you get from the women so, once they have the treatment? So my patients are extremely happy. Um, they, they don't want to stop their therapies at all because they just feel that they're alive again, like you just previously mentioned. They're able to function. 
Um, they have a, a normal sex life again. They don't feel fatigued. They don't feel tired. They're not having these hot flashes that are interfering with their, their life. It's like a reawakening. Exactly. But remember, menopause is not a disease. It is just a stage of life. And we just need to deal with that stage of life. And now we have options. And, and I, the main idea behind this podcast is to give women the idea that this is a normal part of life. And, and now they have options and, uh, and they should seek out their, the, the intimacy and the privacy of their f own physician That's and discuss correct. this and find what options are best for them. That is correct. So thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Ramirez. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking about this. I, I, feel, I feel women can have the confidence to go and have these conversations now with their own doctors. Um, and I wanna welcome all of our listeners to continue to follow us on Spotify and Instagram and Apple uh, podcasts. So thanks again for, for coming along. Thank you for having me.